Welcome to TradeTheNBI.com. This is John's report. It's for the 1st of August. And, well, what a recovery. So, literally, uh, you know, July came off of that uh, June dip. And we had just a few more days before we caught that little uh, DOC orange dip here below the red, green crossing over, clean buy signal. And all it did was bring us back up to where we were for June. But... Having gone from, you know, the minus 20 uh, percent, uh, 22 actually, all the way back up in literally just over a month, uh, it's a pretty impressive run. Uh, and counter to what, uh, you know, the intuitive uh, nature of most people who would see where things were going economically, but there were so many position, people positioned in one direction, uh, it invariably creates the counter trade because, it, again, the masses aren't the ones that move the market. Uh, there's a limited number of individuals that, uh, whether you call them corporations or funds, uh, entities, it doesn't make any difference. What you call it, they represent a disproportional amount of power relative to the masses. So, um, you know, the, the only counter we've ever seen to that uh, was the uh, individual stocks like uh, GameStop and a few of the others that... Um, the crowd was able to influence, but that's on such a small scale. We're talking about uh, the enormous markets of the S&P 500 NASDAQ. Uh, it takes a significant amount of juice to uh, make these go. What we're looking at though, uh, still uh, MBI Magenta over 33, uh, above yellow, those are all positives. Green MB, uh, DOC down here, uh, which is uh, midterm buyers as well as long-term buyers in red, uh, all skyrocketing. Short's really not active in the situation. We do have a little softness on short-term buyers at this point and these last couple moves all on positive extremes if we just take a look right here so that puts the 39.94 as the pullback range um, on a weakness sell signal uh, which we don't have at this particular stage but should have happened we will be aware of it before and what the projected targets would be. The NASDAQ has been the clear out performer in all this, all the way at its 100% uh, Morganacci uh, from the declining Morganacci level. And the fact that it's broken out above the previous resistance already, uh, the question will be how much does it extend past that before pulling back into it because uh, that will be a natural uh, tendency to come back, which makes sense on the S&P when we look at those positive extremes and that we would see a return there. And and the strong build, uh, slowly but surely, of the euro, trying to resurrect it from uh, the, <laughs> I was going to say the, the grave, because at the end of the day, um, while not dead, who really wants to buy ECB debt, uh, given what's going on in Europe? Uh, yes, they think they're making inroads and solving their energy crisis, but... Uh, will it be in time? Uh, you know, is cutting off the hot water at municipal buildings and uh, reducing the amount of lights that can be turned on going to be enough? Unlikely. And whether or not this, uh, you know, continues is the question, and whether or not there's some mitigation for the uh, ability to buy Russian oil. Uh, or gas, both, and will that continue? So those are still potential pitfalls that really could undo the euro at any given time, uh, depending on uh, the de-escalation or escalation. It seems like more and more there's talk of trying to de-escalate uh, the ridiculousness of what was created because uh, it's just not working out. And uh, everything they thought was going to happen didn't happen, so I don't know that you could be more epically wrong than, I guess, maybe... WMD in Iraq, I guess, would be the closest proximity to really epic fail, um, followed by the what withdrawal in Afghanistan, I guess. So um, they really messed this one up, and uh, guess the timing of it was fine. It didn't really affect the market uh, hardly at all. Uh, you know, if you call minus twenty-two, not hardly at all. Uh, but we're back to you know almost minus ten, which. That would be easily made it before the year-end uh, rally. So we're looking at gold uh, well below where it should be, and we knew that this turnaround was going to start to take place. Uh, with that deeper red, I would expect some softness to come in now that we're approaching the 50%. Uh, we'll see if we get that pivot lower. That would be a reasonable spot to expect that to take place. And from an oil standpoint, 
just hovering under that $100 uh, dollar marker. And uh, that's okay. It's still generating accelerated pricing. Uh, just the rate of increase is going to diminish dramatically. So it doesn't really help much. It's just the longer it goes, this, uh, what we look for is the absorption rate and whether or not people are able to sustain their ability to perform their normal life and still absorb the extra costs and what that does to overall uh, discretionary spending. And uh, it can have some positive impacts as far as uh, uh, draining uh, excess liquidity and it certainly is going to soften uh, real estate and everything else. So those may have uh, an unintended benefit because it does soften things, but with the, the constant rate of inflation growing and if rent start to increase proportional to it, uh, then you start to have some more uh, real problems. Uh, from a treasury standpoint, uh, they're expecting a little bit more softness here because uh, relative to where we should be with rising rates, uh, just a lot of money flowing in and that is causing a de decline in interest rates from a broader perspective and we're probably going to see some more inversions of the 10 and 2 year yields and none of those are good signs because they inevitably always lead to full on recessions uh, and I guess you know it depends on if you want to go with the original definition of two quarters we're already in one but uh, with negative growth but let's pretend uh, we'll just go with uh, the fact that things are humming along because that's what the Fed says that there is no recession so can't fight the Fed um, until they admit they're wrong, which won't happen until well after the recession is over. <laughs> we can deal with that one another time. Bitcoin still holding above. I mean, I actually tried to poke towards that 25 figure, but uh, right back in the middle range. Uh, and we've been seeing somewhere between this 19 and uh, you know, 23 range. So the fact that it popped up above it, we have the potential to have another slight breakout. Uh, it's just not having that explosive move. The ETH has still, I think, been one of the stronger uh, as far as trade goes. Certainly uh, well off of you know, highs. That's really not relative uh, to the ability to really uh, capture some nice, clean uh, algorithm moves. Uh, so it's been very precise from that standpoint. Uh, 50K took out on that uh, decline that took place uh, from there. Um, slight gain nothing special and from a 5k standpoint you can see uh, we created a bunch more positive extremes uh, down and through we filled all those back here in the um, inside area and in that softness we had a little pullback back up to that uh, 4123 algo area we still have further lower down here at uh, the 4103 from an intraday standpoint but uh, overall uh, things were pretty benign for the day. We had just some nice declines, easy rides back up. Uh, there wasn't anything that I thought was uh, overridingly uh, unusual other than it was very clean for an end of month, um, simply because the rally was so uh, significant towards the end of it. There really wasn't a whole lot of uh, attack or resistance against it from an algo standpoint, and so it made it uh, clean and simple to follow along with that. As always, though, trade well. Look for me on the Skype chat. We'll talk to you later. Ciao.